uh, afternoon. Uh, I had a chance to speak with this young gentleman for a little bit. Um, very impressive young man, uh, Cameron uh, Mirza from uh, Milton. Uh, he's a junior there at Milton High School. Um, sounds like he's a, a top member on their forensics team. Uh, maybe a future U.S. Senator. I want to watch your back, Tammy. This, this young man's uh, roaring to go. So uh, he'll be coming up today to, to actually give a speech on uh, what we can learn from Dr. King's dream and how we can keep uh, his vision and revolution alive. So Cameron, if you'd like to come up and uh, present, we welcome you to the stage. All right, here we go. On March 8, 1965, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. quipped in one of his stirring sermons, a man dies when he refuses to stand up for that which is right. A man dies when he refuses to stand up for justice. A man dies when he refuses to take a stand for that which is true. Standing here on January 12, 2019, that statement is just as profound. To be fully committed to the dreams spelled out by Dr. King and others like him, we must seize the opportunities around us to take a stand against injustice and oppression in all their forms. And for any naysayer who suggests that injustice was defeated in the civil rights movement, I point to the artificial divisions we insist upon constructing daily, divisions of race, socioeconomic status, gender, and religion, we are not yet free. The true liberation would see a shift in attitude towards those seeking refuge in this country. True liberation would see an end to law enforcement's persecution of African Americans. True liberation would see us, our country separating children from their parents and putting them in cages. True liberation would see our citizens committed to working together to solve the world's problems. True liberation would see, would see us with men and women being paid the same amount for doing the same job. True liberation would see us with a true representative democracy with a vote that actually matters. And true liberation will not be able to be fully achieved until those from the inner city to the rural country have the same equal opportunity to a quality education. We should be free to run our own ideas, to run our own government, and to run our own lives, and not be, and not be dictated and corrupted by big money. While well, liberation during the civil rights movement was synonymous with equality, void of discrimination regardless of an individual's race, today it has evolved. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is a hero. He laid down his life for this movement, and in his death, he left us the wheel. But we have yet to take the initiative to sit in the driver's seat. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. taught us the power of the collective. He did not bring rise to civil rights on his own. The movement was created by a collective of people. People who were white, black, and brown. People who were Christian, Muslim, and Jewish. People who were students, elected officials, and teachers. All of whom had the courage to stand against the common injustice. The injustice of state-sponsored discrimination. That is why they were capable of such a victory. It wasn't a single charismatic leader, a single event, or even a single speech that allowed the supporters of the civil rights movement to persevere over tyranny. It was a group of people working together for the good of all that solidified this victory. Of course, such movements still require an ideal, a leader, and an agenda. A movement without, uh, without leadership flounders. A movement without a platform strays, and a movement with the, without an ideal is easily eradicated. But this is not simply a speech about Martin Luther King and his movement. 
This is a call to action. We can't wait for the next prophet, hero, or legend to save us. Each of us, regardless of our circumstances, is capable of identifying a problem and then taking action, however small, to make a change for the better. Change is something we're all capable of achieving as individuals. Now imagine if we work together. It's our responsibility to use our money morally. It's our responsibility to engage in peaceful acts of resistance to disrupt destructive acts occurring in our communities. And finally, it is our responsibility to use our voices to disseminate messages of hope and that which we were taught since we were children. Do not hoard your things while others suffer. Do not treat others in a way you would not wish to be treated. And do not stand silent towards the wrongs of the world, because if you do, you're just as bad as the people committing those wrongs. My fellow enlightened citizens, true liberation does not require the people to conform to the norm of one race or the ideals of one religion, but to celebrate the differences among us all.